This is I'm Migrant Podcast with Robinson. Welcome everybody to the I'm Migrant Podcast with Robinson. And today I'm very pleased to have with me Abhe. Welcome to the show, Abhe. Hello, hi Robinson. It's nice to be here. It's been a long time that we've tried to get this interview going, this uh, podcast going. So again, I'm really happy to have you here. I'm happy you come from India, but let us know a little bit more about you for those listeners of our podcast. Yes, I'm originally from India. That's true. I've had a very interesting, oh, I don't know if that is interesting, but I have a very strange journey in life. I have spent, like after India, I spent close to 10 years living in Japan, nine and a half years, uh, where I got my master's and my PhD in uh, informatics in Japan. And after that, I moved to Canada uh, to McGill University to do my postdoctoral uh, fellowship. And that's how I ended in Canada. And now I've been in Canada for more than 10 years. It's been a, I've spent several years living in, you know, as an immigrant in Canada. And I hope I'm able to give you some interesting information to the rest of the people who are listening to the podcast. And that's exactly why we have this project the immigrant project per se and the podcast because we want to hear from other immigrants just like us and help the ones that are coming or that are already here so you've been here for 10 11 years yeah you've had your work history like all of us but mm -hmm. you are really an entrepreneur and you've started a few ideas a few businesses what are your recommendations to those based on your experience that are thinking about starting a new business, going into that entrepreneurship world. Based on your experience, what do you think are the things that people should have in mind before they start? <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, uh, maybe as I'm, this might be a little counterintuitive or even uh, what a lot of people might not say, but I, I think everybody's journey is, is personal. And it has like they are, everybody has to consider their individual circumstances as well as preferences, attitudes, culture, background to do to to jump into this and uh, to to do this. And for me personally, I can tell you that this was not my chosen path. Like like initially, right? Um, it's it's something, and it it happens with, to a lot of people. In fact, a lot of entrepreneurs that I meet that you stumble onto it more than more than anything else. It's just, it, it's something that, and I, I really believe this, that, you know, life makes you do things that you never really thought that you would, you would do or you never really planned to do. I stumbled onto entrepreneurship. If you call it entrepreneur, I don't really even consider myself like an entrepreneur, quote unquote entrepreneur. I started off as a consultant in 2013. That's where I started as an individual consultant that had a self-proprietorship and started uh, doing work on my own. And in fact, with my current team that I ultimately became a co-founder of uh, the company was, I actually met them as a, as a consultant. I was doing consulting work for them. And then as I got to know them better, they kind of said, okay, we are starting this other project and why don't you become a part of the co-founding team? And that's how I actually met them. And uh, so I was not initially even far, part of the, Uh, original founders team. I joined them later, got equity in the company, and that's how I now currently with Week of Mine as one of the co-founder and CTO of the company. You were uh, forced into it. <laughs> yeah, so it's not. So that's it. That's just it. In fact, it's life. Frankly, that makes you do stuff. A lot of, that. of course, I do have friends and people that I, that I know that from day one are aware that this is something that they want to do. They want to start a business. They want to do stuff on their own. But that was not me. Like I was working here. Overall, I found that, um, frankly, the kind, of the, the, the kind of skills and expertise, the way I wanted to use them, was kind of hard for me to fit into a particular role in a company. So uh, I decided to start something on my own. So everybody and, like, it should look at their own circumstances and decided this is the path uh, for them because it's certainly not an easy path. We always like we always get to see all the successes every day in the newspaper, but there's 
uh, for every, like, you know, these, do you know the statistics behind startups? It's like 90% of startups really fail. Don't like more, more, don't survive for more than five years. So given that fact behind every success story that you hear, there's, there are a lot of stories that of failure. And even on all the success stories, there's a lot of stuff that we don't hear, like all the hard work that has gone behind it and all the stuff that has happened in, behind it. So it's a plunge that not to be taken lightly than to be navigated once you've actually taken the plunge to do it. I agree with you, but if you have the right partners, if you have the right coaches, if you have the right people around you, because at the end of the day, we need those people around us. Mm -hmm when we're going to start something, people that we can trust. I think we have a safer path, but I do agree with you that there's a lot of up and downs. I've heard, for example, Michael Jordan, that a lot of people consider to be the greatest basketball player of all time. And mm -hmm. for a lot of people that maybe never saw him playing, mm -hmm. they think that he got every single basket, right? Mm -hmm. But he says that, People don't really focus on all the failures that he had to make it to this position that he's in right now. Yes, there's a lot of difficulty. There's a lot of work behind the scenes. There's a lot of things that people do not see, especially when you grow so big and so famous. Mm. People imagine that it was just like in the blink of an eye, but yeah. sometimes it could be even 20 years or 30 years before something really yeah. explodes. Yeah, exactly. So it's that that's just it. So success is never instantaneous. It might appear so. And just we have always have to remember that that we don't ever really know the real story, true story behind anything. Just yesterday I was reading, like, you know, I don't know if you know about it, but this Montreal startup called Smart Halo. Like even they have they have made they have this um, product that they had launched, which was for bikes. Like it was a, it was a meter, like it was a smart display that you mounted on the front of your bike. I mean, bicycle, basically. And it used to display information regarding where your route and where you're going. And it had actually become quite popular. They had, they had launched like a crowd, what is it called? Crowdfunding campaign. Right. They got several thousand orders for it. And ultimately they had to, they closed it down like two days ago. So even after having a successful product then so a lot, a lot of people have not, they had, they had a product that they launched, I think, five years ago, which became quite successful. Then they launched a second product called Smart Halo 2 a few months ago, and they actually got good response to that, but ultimately they decided to close it down. So it was, again, an IoT product. It was, it was very well designed, looked pretty, really neat. Even, so it always goes to show that ultimately it's, uh, and sometimes it's the, it's the, it's the right decision to, to, to take rather than keep uh, digging yourself into a deeper hole because <laughs> it's sometimes better to just stop and get out because, and it, it's for entrepreneurs, it's, a, it's the toughest decision that anybody would ever have to take is to, at what point do you, do you stop and where do you say, no, I, I, because most of the times it's your baby, you know, it's like you're, you're and you're so invested into it. At what point? And it was actually, as a, as a consultant, it was used to be a, a very difficult decision for me a lot of the times because when we are working with entrepreneurs, they are so personally invested in their ideas. Yes. And in fact, I have written a, one, a blog article about that too in where I'm actually exploring this, asking this question to myself, as how do I, do I let them continue believing this uh, in, you know, kind of illusion uh, or do I, you know, try to uh, tell them, sorry, you should not, you know, you should, this is, this doesn't make sense to go for them. It's a very interesting uh, concept. In fact, if you're interested, there's actually this kind of delusion. In fact, it's like entrepreneurship sometimes is a bit of a living, it's like, it's like living in an illusion most of the time. It's, it's, and it's actually necessary. You need to, the thing is, it's a, why it's necessary because it's so hard. Okay. And yes. it's, um, you have to deal with thousands of things and you have to, there's, there's a question of self-confidence that, and where does, like, if you have, you could need to continue to believe in yourself, believe in your idea and try to, if, because if you don't, you will never be able to overcome those, those hardships right, right. that, that come in your way. And in fact, it's so, I, I, there's a very, there, a very interesting article that came out a year or so ago in a medical journal. I have the link to that in my blog too. And they actually identified this 
a region of the brain that that actually helps us sustain this kind of um, illusion in our in our in our minds, and which actually I think is is this, because unless until this because if you don't don't have that capability of deluding yourself that actually I can do this, you will not get that confidence, you know, of, sure. of, to sure. actually overcome in the and it's 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 very interesting. So that is actually the it's um, it's a source of uh, confidence and self confidence. But at at some point, then in, it actually begins to turn against you because then you're really getting to uh, you're you're getting into overconfidence from self confidence, and then overconfidence is what actually leads you to stop questioning things and leads you to. Uh, uh, destruction in a sense. Yeah, so, and, and it's funny that you mentioned delusion because mm -hmm. I think you and I, a lot of people listening to the podcast when it comes out, have watched Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, mm -hmm. any of those shows, and mm -hmm. you know sometimes you see people there who have spent hundreds of thousands and and their houses they've lost and so many other things and. You know, they just go to the show and some of the investors just tell them, like, you know what, just forget it. Just for, mm. forget about that. Mm. It's not going to work out. Yeah. But as you said, it's, it is our baby. And mm. when do we know exactly to stop? Mm. Like, when it is the right time to stop? We don't know. Mm. It's like denying ourselves mm. from something we have worked so hard. But, mm. you know, sometimes you just have to close that one chapter mm. and keep going. Mm. And it's very important to find out when that moment is. Yeah. No, I'm, it, it's 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 very hard. It's in, uh -huh. uh, there is no way to <laughs> there is no objective kind of definition that of one that of that one can come up with to define that moment at, at what point you need to pull it away and and it's it's not going to happen. It's not possible. So in fact, like it's uh, one interesting uh, you know another con idea to discuss. Interesting idea to discuss is as um, you know. This whole lean uh, method that has that become very popular uh, in recent years is this whole iterative way of doing business, right? And in a sense, and customers, which is very very good. Like I mean, I'm in total agreement with it that you need you know customer discovery, talking to your customers, hearing what their problems are, and in keeping them involved throughout your solution development, trying to find product market fit, trying to find a solution market fit. So like that. So this is this is great, right? And it's a, it's a, it's supposed to be um, an objective, keeping you objective when you build your business method. You know that's that's a, that's the thing. But I think one of the one of I like I consider it to be like the Achilles heel of of this uh, way of business is because it's kind of ignoring human uh, traits, human tendencies. And one of and what I mean by that is. Imagine like you have, as you know, the statistics, you know, that nine out of 10 business fail, right? We know, everybody knows that. So if somebody, if we actually do the, do the lean business in the way it's supposed to be, well, when like um, you get an idea, you find, do research about it and you find out that your business is going to fail, right? Like, let's assume that, of course, we never have perfect information, but let's say you, you you gather your you know data and you find out that okay this business is not it's not something that you want to pursue like it should be pursued right that's it right. so nine out of ten times you will hear that this business this idea is not going to work because we know the statistics nine out of ten business yeah so if we would have pursued this method and it, which which means that we would have information nine out of ten times it would tell us sorry man your idea is not going to work don't work on it but who wants to hear that? Like that is ignoring. If nobody. You somebody, nobody wants to hear that. So you have kind of, kind of uh, entrepreneurship needs this kind of a delusion. It needs you to, to believe. It needs, because it's, it gives you that kind of confidence to overcome problems and which is without which you will never succeed. But as humans, nobody wants to, to listen Nobody wants to hear these words that hey, your idea is BS. It's not never going to work, right? So that's just true. Uh, so it's so that's that's one of the problems with this whole lean um, way of doing business of of basing your decisions based on data. Of course, 
but only on data. I mean, like data, yes, data-driven decision making is of course very important, and it's it's um, the right way to do. But you cannot ignore human tendencies and in, in this, right. which is like you want you need to. It's not like first and foremost again, and that's also something that I've explored on my blog is that data uh, is not perfect, right? And data can can be super misleading. In fact, like it yes. can. And it's, it, I mean, you, there are there are quotes that I can I can pull out that basically, which in essence mean that you know data can be shaped to answer the, a question the way you want it to be. So that's just dangerous. So on one hand, so com completely relying on data to give you tell you the whole story is is um, dangerous. It's hard. We should we, we should never. We definitely should use data to answer some questions, but. Relying on data 100% is not sure because do we have all the data? We can never be we can never be sure. And again, this is something as a consultant I used to have an issue with because at what point? Because I also used to question myself. I can never I can never be 100% confident that this is the right answer. And then oh. and this is a this is a that the data is giving me the right answer. So. We should always leave that margin of error and also question our never become get overconfident and you know, always question everything that you are you are seeing both positive as well as negative that that data can never give us uh, one hundred percent accurate answers. Right. So it's um, it's a fine and path to find. It is, and I'm a. I know you're working on something very cool lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's a project going on there it's out there w what is it how can people get to know more about it or even utilize it yes yeah so right now i think it's the ideal time uh for this it's very simple right now it's uh, the name of the website is vehiclemind.com that's vehiclemind.com and it's a conceptually very simple idea it essentially is a way for you to be able to book prepaid maintenance appointments on your car. So right now is our tire change season, and I'm kind of proud to say that we are the only place in town where you can get a guaranteed appointment, right? So we have uh, over 30 garages that are signed onto our platform. So what we normally say is that you're never more than five kilometers away from a vehicle mine partner garage. People can log on to vehiclemine.com and book any, like almost 70 percent of most maintenance services on their vehicles can be booked online and prepaid we also offer a valet service wherein we actually pick up your car and take it to the garage and bring it back so it's very useful for for busy professionals who don't have time don't want to, or even for seniors who don't really want to go take the car to the um, to the you know to the shop themselves so close to 40 percent of our users are use our valet service too so, so I'm on the website right now. It mm -hmm. looks pretty cool. It's great. Do people need to go to the website or there's an app that people no, can it's download? A, it's a no, it's an all you need to use the website on your even on your mobile phone. Currently there's no app for <clears throat> for this appointment booking. We do have another product for which we do have an app. Uh, but that requires a piece of hardware to be plugged into your into your car. So that will not be so you can also of course book appointments through that app. But for now, I think vehiclemind.com is the place to go to book them. So oh, close to 77% of our uh, users are mobile users. So they book their appointments on the mobile. On the mobile. Mm -hmm. And I see that there's also a 50% discount on Black Friday right now. Yes, there's Black Friday discount <laughs> going on right now. So for sure, the, the listeners have not booked their appointments as yet. Please go ahead and book it. Uh, definitely your tire change, but any other maintenance services that you want to do, oil changes, uh, alignments, service ABC, or your regular schedule appointments. It's a very good deal right now. You should, it's at 50% off. You should definitely take it. That's a great idea. A great idea. You see, that's the entrepreneurship mindset that you have. I think it's something needed, as you said, in town, uh, but I think it's, it's going to grow. There's a huge opportunity for this to grow in Canada and other places. Uh, I know we have to take it one step at a time. Don't go crazy, right? <laughs> uh, so let me ask you, because you mentioned this, and normally at the end of uh, my interviews in the podcast, I ask people to say something in their 
or original language, but you live 10 years in Japan. Do you speak <laughs> Japanese? <laughs> yes, I I used to. I've been, it's been over 10 years since I haven't spoken Japanese, so I'm kind of rusty. <laughs> All right. But, uh, so yeah. you, you can close inviting either in your mother mm -hmm. tongue from India oh or, in, <laughs> or in Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, inviting people to the podcast and also mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to go and visit also Vehicle Mind and, yeah. and follow us mainly in the podcast, yes. So you decide, yeah. your mother yeah. tongue or Japanese? Uh, I'll let you use Japanese. I think that, uh, so I can say, zehi vehicle mind dot com ni itte kudasai e mitte kudasai itsu katte mitte kudasai it's that uh, all right so perfect. it's very simple the short form in in Japanese is the he means please in Japanese yeah itte mitte kudasai is please visit and check it out vehicle mind dot to come but in in Japanese we would say it as vehicle mind dot to come <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. No, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much, Abhay. Thank I appreciate you, the Robinson. time here. And great to I catch hope up everything, with you everything uh, turns out to be great for you and your sure. brother. Thank you. All the best to you too. This was I'm Migrant Podcast with Robinson.